and best of the big jumping events of the season, the McDonald's steeple. The golden girl of the pool, Lindley Frame, can she repeat her world title efforts at Barcelona or has injury hurt her chances? We also talk to distant swimmer Kieran Perkins, whose immediate swimming future is also in doubt for different reasons. Motorsport and Mark Scaife's magnificent win last week. Can he overcome teammate Jim Richards again and put himself on track to become the youngest touring car champion? And a complete wrap-up of all the action in AFL and Rugby League. Welcome back. So plenty still to come on Sports World. Keith Hillier has joined us. Uh, good morning, Keith. How are you? I'm well, thanks, uh, Bruce and you. And uh, that was a scoop getting Jeff Fennick this morning. Wasn't he disappointed? He was disappointed. You didn't back him to win on points or anything yesterday, No, I didn't, did you, but uh, that fight stopped all action at Mooney Valley races yesterday. No one was betting and even the bookmakers were absorbed in the action and the, the general disgust was reflected in the, in the ring when the result went up to... I bet you there was a big boo at the Valley. Oh, they would have been everywhere around yeah. Australia. Nothing upsets Australians more than being cheated in sport, does it? No, and then there's nothing worse than backing what you reckon's a winner and uh, finding out afterwards that they've, uh, they haven't got the money and that's yeah. what happened with Jeff yesterday. Sure. Did you get the money yesterday, Keith? A uh, small profit, but it was hard. The track was heavy at Mooney Valley and uh, the steeple chase the favorite the odds on favorite crespin planet it was a bit of uh, a tough race bruce some tight riding especially by one former new zealand jockey and uh, the rider of crespin planet was not happy about that crespin planet pulled up sore and uh, he in fact was uh, distressed uh, or slightly distressed after the race punters lost heavily there but in sydney someone got the trifecta on that race and for one dollar it paid one hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars Oh, what Massive a dividend. Decent result, isn't it? What about at Eagle Farm in Brisbane? We had the Tattersalls Cup and Tiny's Finito also going around in the big sprint there. Uh, the Tattersalls Cup, another New Zealand victory. They seem to have dominated the uh, Winter Carnival. Yes, Greenback, when he came over here, looked like he might win a couple of major races. He lost form after winning, uh, I think, one of the provincial cups. Yes, he did, yeah. Uh, but he regained it yesterday. It was a very strong win. OK, the favourite was Aquidity at 4-1. to one. Ray's Hope had the, the drifts. Let's go to Eagle Farm for the $100,000 Tattersalls Cup. Down the side, 6.50 to go. Nip of gold in front of Greenback moving a little closer and Dr Glass going up to make a line of three as they approach the corner. Big Raps for Mazo just behind them, then Coconut Ice. Kadea Star making a dash but a bit wide. Ray's Hope and Aquidity next and then Moods. As they straighten up, 4.50 metres to go. Greenback's gone to the lead from Nip of gold. Dr Glass is still there. Coconut Ice for Mazo the outside. Big Raps behind them. Then Kadea Star, Ray's Hope, Moods and Aquidity but Greenback's clear. 200 metres out. Greenback a length in front of Dr the glass coconut ice. Ray's hope in fourth place now. Then Kadeo start the outside and Moods back behind them. But it's Greenback going strongly. And with 100 metres to go, he's got them beaten Greenback. Greenback goes to the post and scores well. Greenback first. Coconut ice second. Tight for third. It'll be a photo between Aquidity, who got going the last little bit, and to a blade. He's there. Yes, the New Zealand horse is dominating there. I don't think we'll see any of those in the spring for the big major races. Maybe Aquidity, who did run in the Melbourne Cup last year, he started 4-1 to one favourite in that race and you saw him flash home then just to miss third placing. Tiny's Finito, what a grand... Well, I was going to say old horse, he's only a five-year-old, but what a bonny horse he is. He won the $100,000 sprint. He's fantastic. I think that was win number 34. 34. It's not bad, is it? Fabulous, isn't it? Every week we say it. He seems to go around every week. He never lets punters down. His uh, trainer, Wally Doolan, collapsed at the track yesterday, Bruce. Wally's 80. He's still in Brisbane Hospital this morning, but he's doing well. He's as tough as his little horse. Oh, he sure is. Let's go and have a look at Tiny's Finito. And Wally, we hope you're feeling better. 6.50 metres out, he's blushing just the leader. Raymond Centre to second, the outside. Olympus a length and a half away third, then Militinsky. Always Grand Heavenly Knight moving up on the outside. Tiny's Finito's with that bunch. He's about four deep as they straighten up. Rekabite's next just behind them. He's blushing, kicked as they headed for home. It's he's blushing a length in front of Raymond Centre to Olympus. Rekabite over towards the inside. Tiny's Finito out wide, starting to gather in the leaders now. And at the 200, he's hit the lead. It's Tiny's Finito in front. Rekabite's coming after him on the inside. Tiny's Finito and Rekabite, 100 metres to go. Tiny's Finito, Rekabite, Tiny's Finito in front. He's got them again, isn't he a beauty? Tiny's Finito first, Rekabite second, Miss Comanche third. She was six lengths away. Well, I think Wayne Wilson summed it up for all of us. He is a beauty, isn't he? 34 wins from 35 starts, that's fantastic. And he's a great little horse. Big run by Rekabite. He's a good horse and 
uh, we saw the improvement there because of the fast rated track he needs it dry. Yes, sir, you mentioned that last week. Uh, in Melbourne, you, you talked about a heavy track, uh, the Ian McDonald steeple yesterday. It's uh, normally the lead up to either the Hiskins, if uh, horses are not seen to be real stayers, real stayers in inverted commas, or the Grand National steeple chase. What did you make of yesterday's race? Uh, well, I think the winner will be saved for the Hiskins rather than be set for the National. It was a dashing win. This was a $600,000 buy originally, later resold for $3,500. So, I didn't uh, realise that. This horse yeah, cost $600,000. bought eh? by um, uh, Lloyd Williams yes. and Kerry Packer, and then was bought on spec by John Leake at the Delgetti sales for $3,500. He had a couple of blown joints, I think, at the time, and John Leake patched him up. He's now trained by his dad because John's doing a little bit of time yes. off the racing scene. And... Uh, this was a result yesterday, one of the most dashing wins we've seen for a long time. It's a tremendous performance. Let's go to the highlights of the McDonald steeple. And the favourite was Crespin Planet, and he did put in a poor jump on the first round. Down the skill side, and they come up to this next tall timber here. New display, about a length and a half clear. Crespin Planet settled in well. Oh, he dipped on landing Crespin Planet. His nose nearly hit the ground, but he got up again. They're and as they come what will be the second last jump. Kashaf, 25 lengths clear. Second is Iron Gate. This leader getting a bit weary. He comes along to this one, but he's safely over it. He's got a big break rounding the home turn. When Finch left to jump, Merry make a second. And then Iron Gate followed by Questland. New display, and behind them is Direct Mail. And well back to Crespin Planet as they make the home turn. Cash F 25 lengths clear as they straighten up. In second place, Merry Makers battling along pretty well. And he's followed then by Questland, Iron Gate, Direct Mail, New Display. But here's the last one. Cash F is out in his own. Coming down to the last fence now, Cash F has a good look at it. And he jumped a little bit awkwardly, but he's got over it safely and he's in no danger. Getting a bit weary in the run home, which is only to be expected, but he'll win it well, Kashaf. And Kashaf comes down to score by 10 lengths. Second is Questland. Third is Merry Maker. Yes, 100 to 1 shot and 140 to 1 shot running second and third. Therefore, the big trifecta in Sydney, 128,000. Mm, $35,000 for a dollar here. The next 100, a little bit more change as well in Sydney. <laughs> you wouldn't be complaining if you won 35, but gee, the extra 100 would be handy, wouldn't it? Probably a record, wouldn't it, for a trifecta? I think so, especially on a steeplechase. Yeah, I mean, you just sure. don't get those sort of results. Um, he's not a bad horse, is he? I mean, it was a dashing ride by Patton. He took off a long way from home, and he's going to be favourite for the Hiskins, I'd reckon. Oh, yes, no doubt. Although the jockey of Crespin Planet, uh, assuming that the horse recovers from that buffeting in the run, has promised different riding tactics the next time. He's promised to give something back to the New Zealands, and he won't be boxed in on the fence and uh, be kept tight for room, he'll okay. be out in front. We can see some aggression there. Uh, Keith, the uh, Melbourne Cup, Caulfield Cup, there's been a fair bit of uh, movement in the markets this week. Two of the Hayes horses, Al Mahib and uh, Brashi, who are both owned from uh, internationally, have been heavily back for these two races. Yes, I know that one doubles bookmaker has said, please uh, stop the supply because uh, we don't <laughs> want any more of this action. And uh, they have, Bruce, and gosh, they, have, they are well credentialed if uh, David Hayes can get them right on the day. Uh, they're... Uh, European performances are fantastic. Outstanding. In fact, David yeah. has said that these are the best group of horses we've ever had, and uh, they've had At Talak and Al Murad. He's not saying that these are better than those two, but as a group and a quantity, yeah. they're the best. We'll have a look at the, the first markets for the Caulfield Cup, Melbourne Cup. Here's the Caulfield Cup. Uh, he's probably an unlikely starter, isn't he, Ralph Haven? Yes, yeah, especially if he gets, uh, well, certainly if he gets the uh, Japan Cup invitation. So take care with the uh, reigning favourite at present, Ralph Haven. And uh, Dorset Downs and Shiva's Revenge, who uh, won uh, derbies and uh, St Ledger's late in the season, are at 12 to 1. Now, the Melbourne Cup, uh, a similar situation. The Dorset Downs favourite at 8 to 1. Uh, Just a Dancer and Shiva's Revenge at 12 to 1. And uh, Al Mahib at 15s and Brashi at 20s. If all these horses stand up, I think we're in for an exciting spring, aren't we? Oh, for sure, Bruce. There's a great lineup, and the uh, presence of the international horses really adds the mystique, doesn't it? Or adds more mystique to uh, the mystery of the cups. That horse, Brashi, uh, dead heated in the French St. Ledger, and the horse he dead heated with Indian Queen won the Ascot Gold Cup last week. So there's nothing wrong with his form line mm. at all. Well, that form would be superior to anything really mm. in this country, and if he regains that form, uh, well, it'll be interesting to see how Jim Bowler. Uh, uh, assesses him. Uh, mm. with well, he's got three weeks to work it out, and Jim has promised he'll come in on the morning that he releases the weight, so uh, we'll get it straight from uh, the handicappers' mouth. And so on speak. that morning, will you make your uh, 77th <laughs> cup declaration, Bruce? I tell you what, I might make my 77th, but it won't be my last. <laughs> no stopping it. There'll be a lot of water under the bridge between then and Melbourne Cup Day, won't there, Keith? I know what's going to happen on the first Tuesday, November. So I picked that, remember? Back in August? I'll, or... have, I'll have the whole 24 running for me. It'll yeah, be beautiful. Sure. Speaking about running, the Irish Derby's on later today. Uh, Generous who won the English Derby's going around and that was Suave Dancer who won the French Derby. 
I think Jet Ski Lady who won the Oaks. And Vincent O'Brien's got an unbeaten three-year-old. It's named Sports World. And it's got a good chance. Really? So we've got our money on yeah. Sports World today. Oh, great. That's a big field, isn't it? Great yeah, field. Yeah, it's a terrific field, Keith. And if we do get vision of the race, we'll show it next week. Good punning. I hope you win this week. And... Uh, Listen, that uh, money that you put on Jeff Fennick with me, I'll give it back to you later. Oh, thanks a lot, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. Good idea, Keith. We'll be back with Lindley Frame after this. Great spot.